You can say whatever you want to say. I can say whatever I want to say. But the truth is, boxing is changing. And to quote Stone Cold Steve Austin, that's the bottom line, baby. You just have to get used to it because it's bringing eyeballs to the sport. Hey, no Ridge from the comic here, right? And we're just going to be talking about the Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley match event. The whole card, actually, we're going to be talking about quickly here because I think, surprisingly, it was actually a very, very good event. There were a handful of bad matches, specifically Tommy Fury looked like dog shit. He was facing someone who was half a foot shorter than him and he couldn't put him away in four rounds. Like, what? What are you doing? Guy, I'm telling you, stop it. You're not your brother. You're not Tyson Fury, the greatest heavyweight since Mike Tyson. You're just not. So don't be doing these games. Don't be playing these games. And I'll be honest, after seeing Jake Paul, after seeing you, it wouldn't be that good of a fight if you two faced off against each other, all right? I think Jake Paul might actually do you in. I'm not saying that I'd do you in. Maybe me from a year ago. I'm telling you, me from a year ago, I would have jumped in a ring with Tommy Fury. Me right now, out of shape, uh, injured in multiple places, probably not a good idea. But me from a year ago, year and a half ago, I would have done it because the guy looks like a porcelain doll who's not really supposed to be a boxer. He'll complain about Jake Paul being a YouTuber and this type of stuff. He's a buddy reality TV star. That's how he got famous. Like his boxing skills are not getting him to the higher echelons of the industry. It's because he was on Love Island, a show I do not frequent. It's a show I don't watch. But just the honest truth, just put it out there. You and Jake Paul, pretty similar. Let's just start off with the elephant in the room, the split decision. I don't know what that judge was thinking to give Tyrone any type, any type of win in any type of circumstances because it was pretty clear Jake won the fight. Now you can say Jake didn't do much in the fight. You can say that, but then you can say Tyrone did even less. And I think that's basically how you have to view it. Jake was aggressive. That's why he won. Tyron did one thing. He was stepping up. He was closing Jake down, but he wasn't throwing any punches. And boxing is about punching the other person and not getting punched. I suppose it's those two things if you want to boil it down and break it down very easily. Punch other people, don't get punched. And Tyron wasn't punching very much, but Jake was punching him quite a lot. And I've said it before and I've said it again, Logan Paul is actually a decent boxer. In terms of the technicals, Logan is a much better technical fighter than Jake. The thing is, Jake throws his hands. Jake will throw. Jake will miss, but he will throw a lot. And because of that, he gets the points. He's moving the fight along. He's being aggressive. And that's what the judges want to see. That's how you win on points. Jake didn't dominate Tyron. By no means did he do that, but he was more aggressive. He pushed. He tried as much as he could. He clinched sometimes. It's what you need to do to get the win. And I'm telling you, Tyron, don't do it. Don't do the big, big thing you don't want to be doing. Don't get the tattoo. Don't do it. Don't get that tattoo of I love Jake Paul somewhere on your body, all right? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the entire MMA community if you do that. And they don't need that, all right? They're 0 for 2 against Jake Paul. It's not necessary. This is kind of like you do that, it's 0 for 10. It doesn't matter. Whatever happens next, Jake Paul has won. He's won in life because he has just devalued the entire MMA community. If you get that tattoo, don't do it. I know you want the bag. I know you want to secure the bag. You want the money. But please, don't. Just accept it. Move on. Go. Ride off into the sunset. You got a lot of money. Don't get the tattoo. I understand why you might want to come back because this is apparently the second most bought pay-per-view event of the year. That's nuts. That's crazy. But it is what it is and the numbers don't lie. The only thing bigger than it so far was the Logan Paul versus Floyd Money Mayweather fight. And that was money for a reason because it was Money Mayweather. And I don't think anyone can come close to these numbers. Boxing is a numbers game. Business is a numbers game. At the end of the day, they're making bank. They're making a lot, a lot of bank. I don't know if Joshua versus Usyk will be able to top this in terms of numbers. I don't think it can. Joshua isn't that popular across the world. Like in the Middle East, he has some support. In the UK, he's obviously huge. But worldwide, Tyson Fury is the bigger draw. He really is. And I think that Deontay Wilder Fury fight next year might get a good amount of buys. But it's the third fight. People know Fury is most likely touch wood gonna win. And I can't see anyone really coming close to these numbers that the Paul brothers have supposedly got over the past year. 
It's incredible stuff. And to be fair, Jake Paul's fight against Tyron wasn't actually that bad. And I think it would have looked even better if there weren't a handful of very, very good displays going on during the night. Daniel Dubois got the job done in and out. I call him the assassin because he's silent but deadly. Like he doesn't speak much, but he's the assassin. As I'm saying, silent, deadly, kind of just how it goes. I also call my farts them sometimes. So I don't know what that says about me, what that says about Danny boy, but I'll tell you the guy could be a world beater one day. I have to say this as well. Amanda Serrano had the fight of the night. That was definitely the best boxing match of the night. I guess Daniel did knock out the Italian stallion, but at the same time, in terms of entertainment value, that fight was incredible. And I think it did a lot for female boxing. Some people would have never watched a female boxing fight before. And I think this did a lot of good for that section of the sport. As well as Love getting a victory, I think it was a good card. I think everyone other than Tommy Fury in his fight had a good match. And look, I don't like Jake Paul, all right? I don't hate the guy, he's done nothing to me, but he's a pretty unlikable guy. I don't like him, I've never liked him through all the years seeing him on YouTube, he never gave me good guy vibes. Logan seems like a decent person, I think Logan would be a troll of a time to hang out with. Jake, less so, but at the same time, you can't bash the success. I appreciate success, I respect success, and whatever way you manage to get there, I might have problems with the way you did it, but at the end of the day you're number one for a reason, and you did something right along your journey to get there. So. I think Jake Paul is going to be at this for a while. He's going to be improving every single time he fights. He went eight rounds. He did look a bit gassed. But eight rounds is eight rounds. Four wins. Undefeated. You can't really ask for more than that. And to top it all off, Dave and Big Cat were there from Barstool. And that was just the cherry on the cake. The cherry on the ice cream. Whatever you want to say there. I do think that that just gave a little more fun to the entire process and it kind of gave a few elements of the thriller fights without making it so bombastic and ridiculous. Like this Showtime event was surprisingly well done, especially bringing in those guys. They kind of added a bit of levity, kind of took it away from being so serious at times. And because of that, they were a great addition. Anyway, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Turn the channel down there if you didn't. If you and Jake himself gonna come after you, you don't want that. He's a problem for a reason. He's called the problem kid, the problem child, the problem little prick. You don't want that. No, you really don't. So just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been the Ranger of the Comic. You've been Graham. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. Been doing it every day for over 1,000 days now. We ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content. Because we're hashtag never not here. Just how it goes. Also bring the podcast. Podcast means nonsense in Punjabi. And we also bring that. Bring a lot. Bring a little. Do a lot. Do a little. But we do indeed bring the quality shitty content on a daily basis. So see you tomorrow. More of the same, slightly different, but essentially the very same. Once more, see you then. Skadoosh.